So when it comes to your point from yes, why don't buy uh, the local flow? They want me to pay for it. And I'll have to charge you money to do it. The lady is not. No matter if it's going to say the team we're all going to watch off the people to go to and I think we've got a wild card to say we need to go to a foot and shoot together of what we do and get them out there and also maybe get them the activities that are already up in the world that's what we wanted to do to let the community groups who are already doing this just sort of have a look at what they're doing and I think, I think Paul's idea is a pretty fair idea and a pretty good idea, actually. Um, I get um, information from the, the National Health, from the hospital National Health. It's squirted through email and squirted through the letterbox as well, and snail post. I don't know why they send both, but they do. And it would be very nice to actually put that in. The information which comes through and tells you about your hospital, tells you how your hospital, what the governors are, because as we all know, there's governors on these hospital boards now, of which we know most of them, don't we, on this table, down there. And that information could feed through onto that. Um, the problem comes, it's quite expensive to run a new sheet as we... Absolutely, but if we take all the, you know, if these organisations would de donate some of their communications budget to this project, and we can use some of our own projects, and we, we know we've got volunteers who will help, and we can perhaps create a job for somebody, you know. Maybe you should have to talk to the chair people of these tr of the trusts to start with. <laughs> giving people the ability to be able to use them. And I think we can use this form linking into the Housing Association, linking into the funding that's already out there. All we need to do is apply for it. You know, you, all we need to do is get the, the council officer to apply, to make a bid for that um, um, digital inclusion money, and we'll get it tomorrow. You know, we've got the facilities to be able to do that. That could help support the wider project, but also fill in the gaps regarding digital inclusion, digital communication, the communication of, of reading, getting that reading material, using every single avenue we possibly can to get that communication out there and save ourselves some money, basically. Can I also say, Tom, can we just, just come on that? Because we went to meet last night up in Liverpool, where a lady had just been through digital inclusion. She's now a trainer. So there may be people here who want to, to learn about digital inclusion, Take the course, do the course, and then become trained. That's the way we spend it. Tony? Yeah. Um, I think it is a good idea <coughs> to have a community <coughs> paper, but you need to uh, think of how you're going to reach the people who don't have English yeah. first language. Mm -hmm. And not ask them to be <laughs> printed in hundreds of languages, but to use the groups that are servicing those people, um, because you know they're the ones who are suffering. 
Yeah. Yeah. And they're the groups that are made so, right now. So if you engage yeah. early on with a little change for yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Well, well, I think Tony's point is actually good. I mean, if everybody was looking at the internet and we had, you know, a will newspaper, a Birkenhead newspaper, that we all directed towards people towards. Well, look, I, I have the internet at home at work, but I still don't look at it for local news, to be honest with you. I, I look at, you know, the focus that comes through the door or, or the labour <laughs> road. <laughs>
we're probably talking about we're probably talking about a a start on staff probably sometime um, during the money towards the end of fifteen. So when would when would the project start? So fourteen this year. So when would the, so the, so we we'll, we're, we're looking at a start next next year to be open by two thousand and sixteen. But it, it, it's very much you know it's very much impositive. talking about yeah. it's, it's to do with the boundary road opposite Bidston Hill where we have to park on the pavement I have a disabled banjo display outside our home and unfortunately I have to park as near off it as possible and so does my neighbours because the articulated lorries come down and double-decker buses come down 
and last year uh, two cars hit my car and their cars were smashed up and everything because I had done what I was advised to park in my disabled bay but unfortunately now I'm parking on the pavement and I want to know what exactly that can be done about it. Um, I, I don't want to jump in, but we did, a year after the meeting we were where, where the student committee, uh, uh, Alan Chairs, and, and we were there, we had a, a, a full uh, and wide ranging debate around parking on pavements. And uh, we actually recommended at that meeting that the issue of pay, parking on pavements be come down to the local constituency committee. Yeah. because. Be honest in some of the streets in Bergen Hair, parking on the pavement is the only way you'll survive and, and make the area safe and keep your car in one piece. Whereas the argument from other parts of the borough, where this is a disgrace, people should never park on the pavement, it should be you know, home drawn and watered. And, and I said, Look, this isn't a one size fits all. Bergen Head is, is got very narrow streets, jam, jam packed. So we've suggested, uh, you know, for me assurance for you, that that is very much the work of this type of committee and have a, a discussion about. I don't think it should be a blanket policy one way or the other. I think it should be a, a policy that suits the area that you actually live in because there are too many cars for the numbers road. So, so it is on the agenda for this committee by, by virtue of recognising what a useful piece of uh, machinery these constituency committees are to discuss such a sub subject. So, my view is, if you believe you're safer at the moment by parking on the pavement, I would. I would. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wouldn't, re wouldn't recommend anybody park on the pavement. I wouldn't recommend anybody obstruct the pavement. It's an offence to obstruct the pavement. It's not an offence to park on the pavement. It's an offence to obstruct it. And when I mean I say obstruct, of course, I think ram you down the road.
very uh, brief question. I know that you've uh, got Neptune t to come up with a master plan for Birkenhead. What's the time scale on that and when is the public going to be consulted? Um, we, at the moment we're hoping that they'll, they'll be able to come up with the initial um, proposals and, and they'll be shared um, you know, they'll be in the public and they'll be in the public. Would it be possible for them to give a presentation? To sure.